principles of leadership. So the, again, the key, the key idea behind leadership is putting um, the well-being of others, uh, sometimes before ourselves, considering the well-being of others. So a great example of how to think about leadership um, is something I witnessed um, when I visited Quantico Marine Base, which is where the Marines select their officers. And I did not hear a single Marine say the words, I am a leader. I want to be a leader. I aspire to be a leader. I think I have what it takes to be a good leader. Those words were never uttered. The words you do hear are, I'm a leader of Marines. I believe I have what it takes to be a leader of Marines. I aspire to be a good leader of Marines. In other words, even in their own vernacular, they see leadership as a service to another human being, a leader of Marines, not just this leader, not this position or title to be held. And, and I think that's what we all have to remember, which is leadership is not um, a rank to attain. It's a responsibility. Uh, and it's an honor. Um, it's much like being a parent. You know, um, the choice to have kids is the fun part. Um, the choice to raise children is the difficult part. I'm amazed because um, uh, the first time I spoke to you, I said the same thing. Um, to you about your book. Those are all biblical principles. And you're not coming to it from a place of the Bible, but they're all universal principles. They're human principles. They're human principles. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it is the same as, um, you know, what Jesus says, the first will be last. And, you know, she's greater because she took her hair and washed my feet. When that, at the time, was... You wouldn't to get around those people. But I serve you. I'll, ser I'll wash your feet. And it's the same principle back There's then. No and, expectation of anything in right. return. And and back then they didn't get it, and we still don't get it. And this is why when we find great leaders, the reason we want to follow them is because they serve as the example. They give us permission. They show us what it looks like. They lead the way. You know, leadership comes with risk. You go first means you're the one who may get in trouble or get your head cut off right. for, for, for taking that risk and showing so us does what, leadership, what the right thing to do is. Do, does good leadership have anything to do with shedding all the trappings of the leaders? And I mean, because it, it, some people will say, um, well, they're, they're rich or they're this or that. You can still be... There, there, it doesn't matter. There's no relationship whatsoever. You know, as a leader, you know, we're hierarchical animals, naturally. And th there's, there's basis for this, which is we used to live in populations no bigger than 150 people. This presents a bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, these austere times, someone brings back food, we all rush in to eat. Um, if you're lucky enough to be built like a linebacker, you shove your way to the front. If you're the artist of the family, you get an elbow in the face. This is a bad system for cooperation because right. the odds are I'm not going to alert the person who punched me in the face this afternoon. I'm not going to alert them to danger this evening when they're sleeping. Correct. And I'm just going to leave them. So there's a different system that had to evolve. Um, and we are hierarchical animals. We're constantly assessing and judging each other. Who's alpha? Who's beta? And when we assess that someone is alpha to us, and sometimes it's a formal hierarchy, you know, it's a higher rank, and sometimes it's an informal thing, um, and it's not a constant, it's a relative system. When we assess that someone is alpha, we voluntarily step back and allow our alphas to eat first. Alphas get first choice of meat and first choice of mate. And so though we may not get the best choice of meat, we will get to eat eventually and we don't get an elbow in the face. Good system. And to this day, this system exists and is alive and well. Not a single person has a problem with somebody more senior than them in the company making a higher salary. It doesn't bother us. We may think they're ineffective, we may think they're an idiot, but it actually doesn't bother us that they get a higher salary because they're higher level than us in the company. It doesn't bother us that they have a bigger office or a better parking space. However, it is in our society being touted as a bad thing. And here's the reason. Okay. Because none of that stuff comes for free. You see, we are okay with our leaders being given preferential treatment and, and having the trappings and the perks if they're willing to uphold their responsibility as a leader. It doesn't come for free. So the, group, the group is not stupid. Right. You see, we expect, we expect that when danger threatens the tribe, when danger threatens the group, that it'll be the guy who's stronger, better fed, with all that confidence, who will rush towards the danger to protect us. So it's the one, it's the, the reason why that's happening is because the big guys got the bailouts, they all kept their jobs, nobody paid the price, but when there was trouble, they cut all of those jobs and down there. 
And this is why we have visceral contempt for some of the banking CEOs and their disproportionate salaries and perks. It's not the numbers. It's that they have violated the very human definition of what it means to be a leader. We know that they allowed people to be sacrificed so they could keep wow. what was theirs, or worse, they sacrificed their people so they could keep what was theirs. What if I told you we were going to give Nelson Mandela a $150 million bonus? No big deal. How about Mother Teresa? $250 million bonus. Right. No one has a problem with the numbers or the perks or the better life or the people carrying your bags or calling you sermon. No one has an issue with that. In fact, I had a problem when Jimmy Carter wouldn't carry his bags because I was like, he's the president. He's the president, exactly. The issue we have is when you were given all of those advantages and you were not willing to uphold the responsibility of, of the leader. In other words, you think it's about you. Th there was a great story which I was told, which I'll share with you, which I think ca encapsulates what it means to be a leader. It was a former undersecretary of defense, and he, he, he retired about a year prior. And he was given a speech at a large conference, about a thousand people. And he's standing on the stage giving his prepared remarks, sipping his coffee from a styrofoam cup he had. And he stops and interrupts himself. And he looks down at the cup, and he looks up at the audience. He says, you know, I spoke at this exact same conference last year, except last year I was still the undersecretary. And I flew here business class, and there was someone to meet me at the airport, and they drove me to the hotel, and they'd already checked me in, and they took me up to my room. I came down the next morning. Another person was waiting for me, drove me to the same venue. They took me in the back entrance. They took me to the green room, and they gave me a cup of coffee and a beautiful ceramic cup. He says, I'm no longer the undersecretary. I flew here coach. I took a cab from the airport to the hotel. I checked myself in. This morning, I took another cab to this venue. I walked in the front door, found my way backstage, and when I asked somebody, do you have any coffee, he pointed to the coffee machine in the corner, and I poured myself a cup of coffee into this here styrofoam cup. He says, the lesson is, the ceramic cup was never meant for me. It was meant for the position I held. I deserve a styrofoam cup. And this is the point. I think a lot of people in leadership positions believe that all those perks that are afforded to them are for them. them. It's not. It's for the position they hold. Wow. And they have a response, because by the way, when they leave, they will give those things to the next person. Um, and uh, I think one of the, the humilities of leadership is that we have to remember, though we are given these things, and we can enjoy them. I mean, let's be honest. It, it, it's good. It's nice. It's good to be the king. It feels good. We get all these advantages. But it all comes at a price. First of all, it's given to the position and not to you. That's number one. And number two, we, we have to pay for those things by offering and sometimes sacrificing what is in our interest for the good of those around us, for the good of those who, who have committed themselves to see uh, our visions come to life. That's the responsibility.